What is up, my Doomer friend? What's up, my Doomers? It is Wednesday, November. T what is up, my? Do what is up, my Doomer friends? Today is Wednesday, November 23rd. All of you 982 little miracles, welcome back to my channel. Hit like and subscribe if you have all, haven't already. I'm covering the impending collapse of global civilization and uh, overshoot, which is all happening at once. Wee! Thanks for coming back. I have a few articles today I want to cover, but on the general broad scope of things, we cannot keep this petroleum oil-based fuel civilization going. Literally everything we require from ammo to Vaseline, shampoo, food, and medicine requires fossil fuel production. So as soon as that starts going down, America is going to become a bloodbath. But everybody still wants to live here. The city's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, an illusion, but it's there. Someone on my last video started projecting on me and saying that I was an entitled human being for owning a firearm. Uh, and for that, all I can say is it's loaded and ready for you because I am through with psycho nut job sociopathic types in America who constantly walk over other people, project their own insecurities, and just otherwise lie, cheat, and steal to get their way into money. But it isn't all about money, right? Or is it? Is it about prestige? No, it's about being kind, being a kind person. An art that we have, I guess you could say, lost for the most part. I'm just gonna get into some articles to give you a kind of a scope of what, what we have coming, all right? I think I would have this already loaded up. Right here, agriculture and food security threatened by warmer, drier world. I'm going to put it up on the screen here to your left. This model predicts increasing crop failure in major bread baskets over the next three decades. Three decades, you can be sure by one decade we'll have seen enough. 72% of today's staple crops, maize, wheat, soybean, and rice are grown in just five countries and regions world known as bread baskets from the plains of North America to the river valleys of India and China. These regions earn their distinction for supporting hundreds of years of agriculture production with their climate suitability. These regions have developed this way for centuries in the same way that human settlements developed around water because that's where research that's where the resource was says a research ass assistant well interestingly the story in the post tells us that california is in its third consecutive year of a severe drought but it fails to mention that california as with much of the western part of north america is in the midst of a mega drought the likes of which has not been experienced for at least 1200 years and when we last had a mega drought on this continent, it led directly to the demise of at least three civilizations. By 2050, the likelihood of, uh, by 2030, crop yields fail, crop yield failures will be 4.5 times higher than today. And you're seeing those prices. Turkey is 17% up over the last year. Wages have not gone up. Meanwhile, there are 782 billionaires roaming around the planet flying in their private jets with a combined wealth of something like $4.5 trillion. By 2050, the likelihood shoots up to 25 times current rates. The world could be facing rice and wheat failure every other year with the probability of soybean and maize failures even higher. A synchronized failure across all four crops becomes a possibility every 11 years. Here's a little graphic. Northeast India will see the highest increase of new crop failures where they're trying to feed billions of people. That sounds like rapid drastic change. That's because it is. The immediacy of increasing failures even captured surprise caparis. The fact that by 2050, which we almost halfway do already, there could be wheat failure every year. 
one major component i'm going to turn here because the wind one major component of of crop failure predictions is water scarcity in a warmer world water is a critical resource climate change would shift precipitation patterns drying out some regions and inundating others wheat is especially water dependent particularly in india where 97 percent of wheat crops are growing in areas already experiencing water stress irrigation could make up for some lack of rain but groundwater stores are already overdrawn in many places brazil's agriculture is showing declines of productivity already clearing and burning forests not only rele releases carbon that contributes to rising global temperatures it can also have a drying effect on local watersheds dr radis radis modeled temperature and precipitation changes along brazil's amazon Corrado frontier her results are not only predicted by 2060 74 percent of the region's agriculture land would fall outside the ideal suitable range for rain-fed agriculture are you awake are you awake yet Here's a graph, uh, here's a little animation of maize yields compared to historic baselines. I'll put it up here. You can see uh, historic regions in the yellow, and it's going to be moving upwards where people live. So basically, we need drought resistance if we're going to feed 10 billion people by 2050. But what if we run out of oil, our energy, by the end of this decade? How are we going to commit to all this? Where are we going to mine the resources? Are you connecting the dots? Okay, let's move on. Everybody's talking about the El Nino. Everybody's talking about El Nino. El Nino this, El Nino that. Climate change will make El Nino and La Nina stronger by 2030, 40 years previously, sooner than previously thought. This in Discover Magazine. This article is about a guy who took a trip to Galapagos and... Despite all of the creatures and little critters that we introduced to the island, the tug of war going on between greenhouse effect causing warming from above and cold ocean current. Right now, the ocean current is winning. It's not just saying cool. It's getting cooler year after year. However, El Nino and La Nina are two sides of a climactic coin called El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO. Scientists already knew climate change was affecting the El Nino Southern Oscillation, writes Winju Kai, a co-author of the study, and the scientists with Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, but because the oscillation itself is so complex and variable, it's been hard to identify where the change is occurring most strongly. Now the study shows that likely the change should become evident in forms of significant shifts of ocean temperature in the eastern tropical Pacific, the locations of Galapagos. Moreover, these changes will become obvious and un unambiguous within about eight years, 40 years earlier than previously thought. The gist is during La Nina events like the current one, trade winds along the equator strengthening, uh, allowing yet more cool water from the depths, depths to surface. This provides a bounty of food for marine animals, but land animals in the Galapagos, such as land and iguanas, tend to suffer. That's because La Nina enhances drought, decreasing the availability of their food. The opposite happens during the El Nino. The trade winds slacken and more rain tends to fall on land. Let's look at this graph. Benefiting terrestrial animals, but with weaker trade winds, there's less upswelling of cold, nutrient-rich water. As a result, marine animals suffer. So it's kind of a catch-22. Because of the isolation of the Galapagos, I'm going to tie this up, which lies 600 miles from the South American coast, tourists often perceive the island to be an oasis of life protected from the environmental impacts afflicting other parts of the world. How wrong could we be? Nothing could be further from the truth. And while scientists can't be sure exactly and how and when our myriad impacts from invasive species to strengthen El Nino and La Nina events ultimately play out, the odds do not f favor the astonishing creatures of the Galapagos. If we value life, we should do something about this. No, we should keep taking our kids to the park, completely ignore the problem, and continue on business as usual because climate change isn't real. Yes, keep lying to your children. Tell them their future is okay. Because that's the right thing to do. Climate change is making the weather more severe. Why don't forecast mention it? I'm just going to briefly wrap up this article from NPR as climate talks just wrapped up, which were a load of crap. One of the few areas of agreement was about the world's toll on climate-driven weather disasters. The connection between extreme weather and climate change has never been clear thanks to an area of science known as extreme event attribution. It allows science to describe how much worse a specific flood, heat wave, hurricane, or drought is because of human-caused global warming, but the science is largely missing from public weather forecasts 
that millions of people in the U.S. rely on. As severe gets, weather gets more common, scientists or forecasters are continuing with a sneakily, a sneakily difficult question. How do we work together to explain the role of climate change? Yet, it's mostly the climate scientists who do the talking, yet the weather forecasters don't mention this. But yet, heat waves are occurring more often in the U.S. than they used to. Look at this graph. From NOAA's National Weather Service from 1961 to 2019, 50 large metropolitan areas in the contiguous U.S. So what they're suggesting is when an extreme event is happening, NOAA's National Service has a singular focus on protecting lives and property. However, they don't necessarily all know the science about climate change, and they're not active in doing that type of analysis. So instead, NOAA scientists separately put out information about how climate change affects for hurricanes, floods, floods, heat waves, and other severe weather. One of the difficulties when the event is happening to try to combine these two in one. So basically what it's saying is all the weather forecasters are paid to do is say this is happening without saying climate change is making these extreme events more likely. Hmm. Sounds pretty brain dead to me. And last but not least, let's wrap up today with today's climate and economy update. There's a particular word which I found fanciful. Broiler bears. Yes, bears and polar bears. They're mating. A regime shift in the Arctic marine system that's likely to become permanent as well. From polar bears to nargula, narlugas, the bizarre hybrid animals that soon become could roam the earth because of climate change. Arct Arctic creatures that was once isolated are now venturing in new territories as sea ice melts. This includes the broiler bear, the offspring of polar bears and brown bears that now hunt in the same areas. Skipping ahead, Seattle breaks record for the longest dry spell with 14 days of no rain, which is pretty significant for Seattle. I'm telling you that from first-hand experience of living there. California's lost rain and snow cuts deep into U.S. food basket. California's lost out on a full year's worth of rain and snow since 2020. The most severe drought in a millennium led to well over half a million acres of idle fields in 2022. Researchers said the report looking at how California's driest three-year period on record has impacted U.S. largest agriculture producer. Drought in Hawaii is fueling rare November wildfire concerns. 2020 Amazon fires tightly tied to recent deforestation. France records 10,000 excess deaths in the second hottest summer on record. But how about those coal miners, huh? How about those coal miners? Ski lift demolished in the French Alps because there is no snow left? What a shame on and on and on fires and whiplashing what can i say i can protect myself and those i love i am still getting together my bug out bag but in all likelihood this is just going to turn into one giant bloodbath by the end of this decade the fall they're going to be um no one will let be left standing it's just going to go out in like a week okay i'm not i'm not that clueless all right I just want to survive because I could say I did. We made it. <laughs> the rise and fall of civilization. Welcome to it. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.